What's up guys? It's the first video of the month and you know what that means. That's right, it's another patron pick. And not to be outdone, but the patrons have leveraged their significant sway to bring something new to us. That's right, it's the first generation 3 Pokemon ever. And that means less gens to cover for me. Hooray. So what is that Pokemon? Could it be a starter? Or perhaps the dominant Salamence? Oh, who am I kidding? I always do this routine, but you guys have already read the video's title. So that's right, it's Breloom. I remember thinking that guy from Devon Co. was weird for searching for Shroomus of all the Pokemon in the forest back in Ruby and Sapphire. Anyway, it turns out he knew what he was talking about. What a pleasant surprise when that little angry mushroom evolved into a powerful kangaroo thing monster. Apparently those little arm things are super stretchy, which explains how it punches, but it's hard to find images of that. But short arms are stretchy, let's find out how good was Breloom actually. And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. Okay, with a base 130 attack, I'm never doubting Breloom's fighting form again. That's as much attack as Machamp, and that thing has four ripped arms. Unfortunately for Breloom, Gen 3 was still the dark times of the Priest's physical special split, meaning it only got to take advantage of its more pugilistic typing as far as attacking moves go. But Breloom's botanical nature expressed itself in other ways, namely, in access to possibly the best move in the game, Spore. Just getting Breloom to learn this move was a pain in the ass. You had to level your Shroomish all the way to 54 before evolving, but it was well worth it. Breloom's lackluster speed meant getting off Spore uncontested could be hard, but thanks to its grass typing, a switch into an Earthquake or Surf freed up a turn for the Mushroom Pokemon to go to work. Once the Spore was down, it was time for Breloom to put those arms to work. A focus punch coming off of that attack stat was absolutely devastating, able to pick up KOs even on Pokemon that just took neutral damage from it. Past those two core moves, the rest of Breloom's moveset was based on whether you wanted to potentially be able to fight flying or ghost types, or double down on the utility Spore could provide. If coverage was the goal, Hidden Power, Ghost, or Rock were okay options, and the last slot could go to Reliable Damage and Brick Break, Priority Mock Punch, or even Snatch if you thought your prediction was super on point. The other route melded Spore with a subseed set, letting Breloom set up a defensive wall that facilitated his punches even better and had the added benefit of being able to save Spore until the Breloom counter came out. But Breloom's variety was negligible past those two sets, which even had the same nature as Eevee's and item. Its only other potential moves were Sword Dance and Charm for different types of stat boosting or stat decreasing, leaving Breloom extremely predictable. Most Pokemon that resisted fighting type moves and that could hit hard would put Breloom in the ground, as its defensive stats were pretty mediocre. Skarmory could work, although even the Metal Birds shuddered at the thought of a Focus Punch. Past that, Weezing, Salamence, Gyarados, Celebi, Moltres, Heracross, and Crobat all took the punch as well and responded responded with super effective moves of their own. But Spore was a constant lurking threat, making a smart Breloom still scary. One of the main counters to Breloom was simply to lure it out. Once Spore was used, its defensive measures were gone, and those counters could go to town. Breloom was scary enough to be readily banned from underuse, but it was still a bit too linear to be an overuse threat, largely because of its reliance on non-stab hidden powers for coverage, and its overall middling stats bar attack. So borderline it was. Luckily for Breloom, Gen 4 gave it a variety of gifts to circumvent those shortcomings. While its stats remained unimpressive aside from attack, Breloom got an incredible ability in Poison Heal when paired with the Toxic Orb. When paired with a Toxic Orb, Breloom could become a status immune pseudo tank due to its ability to heal through substitute every turn so it could make more substitutes and do what it does best, hit hard. It also had some nice new physical attacks to use now. Seed Bomb gave it the grass stab it always wanted, while Stone Edge provided a mix up on flying types. That new coverage let Breloom also run an all out attacking set that frequently forced switches without focus punch due to the threat of strong moves like Seed Bomb, Stone Edge, Super Power, and Toxic Orb boosted facades. Finally, Sword Dance and Mock Punch proved a strong combination to ignore Breloom's mediocre speed letting it potentially sweep the enemy team if it could find a chance to switch in with its good resistances, spore, and status immunity. But alongside its attacking sets, Breloom also found a niche as a stall Pokemon of all things. With Poison Heal recovery, Subsea could now be played geared towards a defensive spread, as Breloom's focus punch was a gut buster even without any investment. Breloom would slowly whittle down opponents with Leech Seed, four of the most threatening members of the team, and whip out its fist to chunk it if it had nothing less to do. This set could effectively wall usual counters like Gyarados if played correctly. Poison Heal was such a good ability that it even enabled Breloom to play weird sets like Double Spores with Stun Spore, or even to trick opponents by foregoing the expected Poison Heal entirely and using a Choice Scarf set to make Breloom a revenge killer. While Breloom was linear in the last gen, that one ability and some new coverage deeply broadened the types of play it was capable of. 
That's not to say it was unstoppable. In fact, Breton was subject to one of the hardest counters in all of Pokemon, Celebi. As if the resistance of both stats and a super effective Psychic weren't enough, Celebi also came packing Natural Cure, meaning even Spore meant nothing to it. Rest Talk sets also functioned extremely well against Breloom since they didn't fear sleep. Specifically, Rest Talk Rotom and Gyarados, whose Intimidate cut Breloom down to size a bit, though Gyarados did fear a potential Stone Edge. Although most Pokemon had to fear potentially being spored, if Breloom had already used its Sleepy Time magic, it was considerably easy to deal with. Gengar had a great type matchup as did Zapdos and Dragonite, and Pokemon who took advantage of Breloom's mass speed like Starmie or Jirachi could switch in on a correct prediction and blast it. Breloom relied heavily on Spore and Substitute to keep it safe. If those were down, it likely was down as well. But that Poison Heal, man, that was more than enough to make it a reliable overuse Pokemon. In fact, it's currently top 10 in usage in the Gen 4 meta today. Just goes to show how much one thing can change a Pokemon, since some of its popular sets were almost identical to the last gen otherwise. And if you thought that Poison Heal was good, let me introduce Technician. Breloom did its same Poison Heal stuff until 2013, when its Dream World ability came out, and maybe you're familiar with Scissor's Bullet Punch making it one of the dominant forces in overused Gen 4? Yeah, Breloom has a fighting typing version of that now, and in a buffed bullet scene, low sweep for some speed control, and the ever terrifying Spore, Breloom was suddenly freed up from its reliance on Substitute and Focus Punch to be an attacking menace. With Life Orb or Choice Band, its typical attacking set delivers some of the strongest power available unboosted in all of Overuse, able to two-hit KO most Pokemon in the metagame. That bullet seed, if RNG paid off, was a potential 187.5 base attack power. And Breloom's attack stat hadn't dropped between gens, so... Low Sweep could secure Breloom just the turn it needed for another attack thanks to its speed drop. And as always, Spore was just incredible. And if you really wanted to kick the power up to 11, there was always Swords Dance. Technician Mach Punch off Swords Dance meant Breloom's speed didn't matter, and all the opponent was getting was raw power. And if Breloom didn't care about the priority, Bullet Seed would rip through enemy teams with very little able to stop it. It's not like Poison Heal was suddenly bad either. Breloom could still do that too, making its threat twofold because of its unpredictability as either a raw attacker that necessitates immediate removal or a set mon that was about to subseed your whole team. That indecision could potentially be fatal, especially when you consider the third archetype, the Drain Tank, with Bulk Up, Drain Punch, and its usual tools of Spore and Seed Bomb. Breloom would lap up the health of its opponents while dishing out its unique blend of stab, which is especially strong in a metagame where it could frequently go whole battles without worrying about a fire or flying type. What's more, Breloom matched up favorably against every weather setter except for Ninetales, making it extraordinarily well suited for weather wars. Of course, Breloom's weakness didn't go away either. It was still on the weaker end in all defenses and speed, so along with the usual fare of Celebi, Gengar, and flying types, faster fighting types could stuff Breloom if they came out before it set up. Gen 5 also brought a whole bunch of Pokemon with favorable type matchups like Volcarona and the contender for the best mushroom Pokemon, Amoongus. How embarrassing to lose to the other mushroom. Substitute sets also had to be afraid of multi-hit moves like Mammoth Swine's Icicle Spear, not to mention Mammoth Swine's Ice Shard, which with Jolly Investment always outsped Breloom's Mach Punch. Tentacruel's Liquid Ooze ability also gave Leech Seed variants trouble. But again, Spore is Breloom's secret weapon. Aside from Celebi and Amoongus, who both simply switch out to shrug off whatever Breloom does, all his counters absolutely hated being put to sleep. That is, except the other prominent Poison Healer user, Gliscor, who was immune to the status and had a good typing matchup. Breloom's mix of potent status and attack prowess compounded with two playstyle defining abilities made it a hugely powerful Pokemon, a standout even in a generation filled with strong fighting types, and one of the most threatening Pokemon in overuse. While some of Breloom's weaknesses, its low defenses and speed, its small move pull, its reliance on setup were exacerbated in doubles, it still had its most important asset, Spore. No sleep clause in doubles meant if Breloom was facilitated correctly, it could potentially cripple the entire team, and its good weather matchups were just as important in doubles as in singles, if not more so, since the ability to one-hit KO Tyranitar was huge in VGC. However, it needed huge amounts of protection to do that, usually in the form of Fake Out or Follow Me teammates. Focus Sash would help with survivability, but that meant sacrificing Poison Heal, which honestly didn't do much in doubles where it died so quickly. Thus, it was in 2013 when Technician became available through Dream World that Breloom really skyrocketed in popularity. Breloom put together a huge resume throughout the 2013 season, among its accolades being a win at the Salem Regional at the hands of the ever-innovating RN Animate, who also then took Loom to top 4 at Nationals. Breloom also got top 8 at Virginia Regionals under the captainship of Warford, and a spot on Aaron Cybertron Zhang's winning Massachusetts Regional team. Each of these players had different partners of Breloom, while RN Animate used his favorite Togekiss with Follow Me and Tailwind, a strategy also used by Dewey, the runner-up of Utah. Wurz started with Togekiss and swapped off for Crobat, whose offense 
Defensive Taunt's Tailwind and Inner Focus let him play more aggressive. Finally, Cybertron ran Lyperd, whose bevy of supporting moves like Fake Out, Encore, Taunt, and Swagger could potentially let Breloom run rampant. That last strategy became extremely popular during the season, to the extent that by Worlds, most teams had specific anti-Breloom strats prepared, leaving Baz Anderson from the UK, who was the most prominent user of the strategy, as the highest placing player with Breloom at 9th. But make no mistake, Breloom was incredibly good in doubles, showing up 7 times in Worlds Top 48, and a whopping 9 times in European Nationals. In fact, two Italians, Brain Dead Primeape and Maddie, used the same Breloom team to win the Italian and German Nationals with thunderous support. So even in other playstyles, Breloom prospered. That's one tough mushroom. And that's a lot of doubles talk we did. In singles, Breloom remained pretty much the same. The increase in poison type popularity due to fairy types introductions hindered it a bit, but its technician and poison heal sets were both still quite strong. With Stall becoming weaker, the poison heal set was usually run with sword dance instead of substitute. Spore also received the nerf, no longer able to affect grass types, Pokemon with overcoat, or Pokemon holding safety goggles. Finally, Talonflame was constantly on the hunt for mushrooms to pick, but Breloom was used to having hard counters and it could win with Rock Tomb or Spore prediction sometimes. It could still pull its old tricks and it sat comfortably in overuse. In VGC 2015, Breloom didn't have nearly the presence it did two years prior. New mega evolutions like Venusaur and Gengar destroyed Breloom, and the new safety goggles, a very common item in VGC, meant Breloom could potentially be hard countered. Add in that the weather meta it thrived in was gone and bird spam became more and more dominant, Breloom became a withered shroom. It wasn't all bad though. Baz Anderson took it all the way to a European Regionals win in Arnhem, and fellow Englishman Stephen Gibbon or Hitmons paid homage by making top 4 at UK Regionals with the same core. Oh yeah, and Sai Chiming won the Taiwan Regional and Asia Cup, with Breloom and Kofari as his follow me user. What's more, while Breloom only showed up on 3 teams in top 48 at Worlds and Masters, the seniors metagame seemingly revolved around Breloom, with many tournament wins coming off of its tiny little red hands. And that's it, so how good was Breloom actually? It was pretty amazing to be honest. There are really only 3 viable spore users in the game, Amoongus, Smeargle, and Breloom. What Breloom brings that's unique is that it can flex that guaranteed sleep for a huge amount of offensive prowess. Combined with its unique typing and absolutely killer abilities, Breloom has always been a force to be reckoned with, unlike other offensive Pokemon. Guess that Devontech really knew what he was talking about, huh? Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to all of you as well. Also, follow my crew on these social media platforms, and uh, that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.